All right. So I've got this set up now where I'm back to where I left off. Remember, I was moving my fern. And now in this next one, the creature has to, its head has to appear from the fern. And so I'm going to animate my, or change my creature. Kind of push it down, rotate it back. Maybe shrink it a little. And puppet warp it. See if I can open those jaws. Just a little bit. All right, now I wanna see if my fern has changed. Yep, so the fern's already animated. All right, so now I need to move these assets of the fern and the background into the next frame. So I gotta select them, duplicate them, move them down, and put my creature between them. And now I just have to animate the fern each time so that it keeps moving. And I can use this now to kind of readjust what's showing up for my creature. So starting actually with this one, I don't need the paw right there. And that's why I've rasterized it. So I can just erase it. A much smaller eraser. 100% soft edged. Let's take it out just like that. No biggie. Nice. Those effects are going to help. Okay. So that's good for that one, the introduction. Now for this one. I need to animate using Puppet Warp the fern. So all of a sudden the fern doesn't just hold still as the creature starts to move. And that's what gets tricky with animation frame by frame with assets is you have to remember all the things that you were moving. So for instance, if you have the stars moving slowly across the sky, they can't all of a sudden just stop and hold still when your creature appears and starts doing something. So my fern started moving, I needed to keep moving, and that's gonna help sell the illusion of this creature being pushed out. Okay, now I'm gonna duplicate both the, well, let's work on the creature a little bit. I'm going to erase from it. Roughly at first, remember it's just GIF animation. I can even turn these paws like into fronds, kind of cut them out with my lasso and delete tool. Maybe change the expression a little bit using Puppet Warp. I can actually like just arch the eye a little. Sometimes I'll I'll composite in eyelids and have the creature blink. But it can work well just to have punch it, puppet warp and kind of pinch the muscles around the eye. Okay, my next frame. Gonna duplicate 
the fern in the background. Now I'll show you a nice little trick now. Now that I know my background isn't changing, I don't need to duplicate that background over and over and over again. It's always behind the next thing, right? But I could just keep it on the base and just have that layer on all the time. But I am duplicating it just to keep it kind of organized. And if I did have a change in the background, like if the color was changing slightly to it, this would make it really easy to do. And that might be a nice, a nice additional thing if I have time, is to like just take the coloring of the background and shift it from warm to cool throughout the animation. So this gives me those options. But I'm going to take the background. I'm going to take the fern, Command-J, move those down to the next keyframe around my creature. Turn off the eyeballs for that frame. Now I actually want to grow my fern a little, I think. So I'm going to puppet warp it because I don't want the rock to grow. Lock that. But not only do I want to move it, I want it to just look like it's a little bit bigger because if it's kind of pushing out this creature, it's going to expand at the top. Like it's getting pushed more out of the way. And that's a good time to have that paw emerge. And I, I did something wrong there. It's just locks I didn't do. And it's that I didn't lock at the top of the rock. So it looks like the rock is, is heaving up. So that's why I always check with what's before. So I'm going to undo that. That's what history is for. Undo that puppet warp. Find it in my history. And this time, remember, as I grow it, I need to lock around the things I need to stay still, including the base of it. And then grow from the leaves. And I love animating organic things like plants, animals, fire. Because it doesn't need to move perfectly evenly. It's not like showing a car moving down the road, you know. If you want something really even, like a panning shot, you need to do the exact number of movements each frame. Like I'll use my arrow keys to nudge it five times each frame. <laughs> and then it will move evenly across the timing. But here, this is just playing with the organics a little bit. And then I can check if that movement is enough. Yep. Now I can look at my creature. And maybe I want to erase away from these paws. And then play with the expression a little bit. Puppet warping the face, especially if you spend some time designing the face, is one of those, those joys. Play with the brow, the head position, above and below the eye. Wiggle the ears. From that to that. Maybe, yeah, I think that's good. All right. Going to copy the fern in the background, duplicate it, 
Even though I'm not making any changes to the background, this gives me the option to do that frame to frame. Move it down. Turn off the frames above. Making my next flipbook page. And this time, part of the creature is going to be on top of the fern. This is when it gets spit out. You know, using my frame. And I need to get that movement. So I might animate a few movements here, a few in-betweens. So let me duplicate the creature. And on this duplicate, let me puppet warp it. Let me push it back a little bit more. Like so. And then duplicate that and do that again. Maybe with this one I close its eye a little bit. I think I would close my eyes if I was being pushed through a fern. That's going to be a little strange, but you'll see how that works. So that's a little tight movement circle. Okay, now the trick is, how do I get the fern to overlap with the right parts of it? And a simple solution is just to erase away. So this is before its paws are on the ground. Before its tail's out. But that's going to be kind of muddy because it's just a soft-edged eraser. So maybe a better solution is to take a chunk of that fern, some internal compositing, create a new asset. And duplicate it and then push that on top of all my creatures. So where was I before? I was here. And now, it's like this. Yeah, that kind of works. I might shrink the back of the creature a little bit. I can just use a regular warp with Command T. So it kind of coiled up. And then I can animate with Puppet Warp that fern, just that cutout of it. Again, making sure I don't move that rock. And I can animate this one. So now I've got two fern layers just for as it transitions from the foreground or from the middle ground to the background. Gives me a lot to play with. 